What's up, guys and gals of the movement world? Sean Mishka again here for Football Beyond the Stats in our Movement Play of the Week. This week for week 12 of the 2021 National Football League season. However, much like we did last year in, two, uh, in 2020 with week 12, where I broke down and analyzed Michael Vick versus uh, the Minnesota Vikings, this year, I thought I would maybe take a, a little break from that which what is currently unfolding in the National Football League here in 21 and uh, rewind back to what uh, back in 1997 uh, in my man Barry Sanders, um, the, the king of dexterity, also the king of Thanksgiving uh, games. Now, I will admit that uh, I had planned to do this breakdown to uh, look at this play or, or these plays rather and this performance this extraordinary performance from 1997 i'd planned to do that last week in celebration of thanksgiving but then jonathan taylor sort of had other ideas for me when he uh, had his five touchdown performance in week 11 and i knew that uh, I, I would regret not diving into his movement skill on that respective day last week so i put a hold a temporary hold i postponed uh diving into barry's play as i will here today until this week um, that being said, obviously, most of you out there probably know how near and dear to my heart Barry Sanders is and his movement skill. Uh, if you didn't notice, obviously, the Barry Sanders uh, autographed uh, uh, print behind me. Uh, there's another one over there, another one on this side, a signed uh, Hall of Fame helmet and a Hall of Fame ticket. Uh, and if you guys couldn't figure that all that out, obviously, I represented and, and wore a Barry Sanders shirt as well. Uh, but obviously, this one is very special for a number of different reasons for me uh, as a movement skill acquisition coach and really viewing movement skill in the ways that I do, uh, conceptualizing it as a problem solving activity, much of the way that I try to hopefully bring most of you out there into my world and how I view movement skill and movement behavior, again, as a problem solving activity. I don't believe that in the National Football League that there's ever been a better example of this problem solver paradigm, this um, chasing of dexterity, or really the expression and embodiment of dexterity, again, the ability to solve any emerging movement problem in any situation, in any condition, uh, based on the Nikolai Bernstein uh, definition of movement skill dexterity. There hasn't been a better example than Barry Sanders. And for that reason, we're going to take some time, look back at his 1997 Thanksgiving performance against the Chicago Bears, and hopefully highlight some of those qualities, some of those characteristics in the living, breathing embodiment of dexterity out on the field um, on that respective day. Just a few uh, constraint considerations here. First and foremost, again, 1997, this was his greatest uh, season in the National Football League, he, the year that he went for 2,000 yards. Uh, of course, that uh, very famous season, the 2,000 yard season, 2053 to be exact, and uh, won the National Football League uh, Most Valuable Player Award, or at least co-won it with Brett Favre. Um, on this respective day, uh, he went for 167 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, he was actually coming off of a 216-yard performance against the Colts just four days before that. So those types of things, obviously, from a constraint consideration standpoint, certainly factor in to how he's seeing the world, how he's intended to act and ultimately how he will act and how we're about to see him uh, behave. Um, I do want to make the mention that most people don't realize that in that 1997 uh, 2000 yard campaign, he actually only had 53 yards through the first two games of the National Football League season. So he actually was struggling a bit um, and, and the Lions were kind of trying to find their way as well. But he averaged very few yards per carry in those first two games. And then he sort of went on this big tear where he had 14 straight games of 100 plus yards. This obviously being one of those. I think this is game number 11, if my math is correct there, uh, as to where he would have had the two or the 100 yards um, in a single uh, event or in a single game. 
Now, obviously, if you were unfamiliar uh, with not only Barry Sanders, but also some of the times that I've gotten into his movement skill at a deeper level, by all means, I'm going to allow you the opportunity to kind of engage with that content. Number one on my football beyond the stats uh, movement analysis, primarily oriented around Barry and his cutting actions. Um, that is going to kind of be a platform for us to discuss some things here today as well. That will be a theme which is threaded throughout our conversation. I, I believe I wrote that in 2016, uh, maybe even 15. I should probably go back and rewrite that because I do have a more evolved lens now in a way that I view movement behavior, specifically in regards to perceptions and cognitions and the ways that those degrees of freedom are intertwined and interwoven with the motor system or the action degrees of freedom, which if you go back to that blog post, you're going to see that though I talk a little bit about his vision and, and the way that he connects to the information in the world. And that really is a true special nature of Barry's movement skill and dexterity. I probably didn't do it justice back in that time, five, six years ago when I initially wrote that blog. Now, I did spend some time on the Saturday to Sunday football podcast with my friend Matt Caraccio um, two years ago when I talked about Barry Sanders um, and his movement skill and really what it made what made it be what it is or what we're about to see today, um, along with giving some comparisons and, and giving some contrast too, uh, in regards to Saquon Barkley. So um, I will put both of those links in here, both on the, the blog as well as in, in the um, body here or the information section for YouTube. Um, if you're new here, or if you're not new here, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the like button. Please give me a little bit of love there if you would. Um, and, and just kind of keep nudging me along here to keep making this video version of the football plays of the week, uh, movement plays of the week for football beyond the stats. Now I will say that I'm going to toggle a little bit today, so I apologize if that gets confusing or distracting in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to toggle between two different videos, and the reason for that is this. One of these videos, the one that I'm starting on here, has a much clearer uh, resolution uh, because it's straight from the National Football League, whereas the other video is going to be more of the TV version, the TV copy. And being that it is from 1997, and it's probably being recorded off of something that doesn't have the same quality as that which what NFL Films has, um, there's going to be a little distinct difference. However, the reason for me using both videos is, as you will find out in this NFL Films version, um, though it is more crystal clear, it also is much more zoomed in at times of key events. And to really get a glimpse as to who Barry Sanders is and how he solved problems, what information he was becoming attuned to, what he was sensitive to in the world, as well as what he was adapting around, we have to, Barry, more than any other player I have found, zoom out, zoom in, and continue to give ourselves this um, analysis, this scope of analysis, seeing local micro minutia of these movement problems, and then being able to see it from its global perspective as well, kind of get an idea as to how these interacting component parts and their related processes of his respective system, his perceptions, his cognitions, and the actions are being coordinated, controlled, and organized in relation to what's unfolding in the problem. Zoom out, zoom in, uh, so on and so forth. So I'm going to bounce back and forth between the videos. Again, I apologize if that's distracting at all, but I think it'll allow us to give a better platform to discuss many of these things as to what makes Barry Sanders in his dexterity so damn dexterous. So that being said, let's go ahead and watch our video here, our, our first video. Um, again, 1997 Thanksgiving uh, versus the Chicago Bears. We're going to watch it at full speed first. And these will be the three touchdown plays. And I should probably just shut up and let you kind of revel in that with what is occurring. Uh, there's the touchdown play number one. Here you're going to see it from a little different angle. As I told you before, they're going to have it zoomed in, but there's going to be a bunch of stuff we're going to be able to look at here. Uh, obviously, not only in this version, but the other one, uh, which gives us a better sideline view at times. Here is touchdown play number two coming up. And don't worry, we will watch these back through. 
uh, touchdown play two and some nifty functional fits uh, to a movement problem here. And I believe that they may show it to us again. Um, actually, they don't. So they move on to touchdown number three here on NFL Films. And obviously, a bunch of different layers here. Anytime that you watch Barry Sanders move and solve problems in the world, what you're going to see is layers upon layers, typically moves upon moves and nuances every single time that you watch that. And, and that's really one of the cool things for me about watching Barry do what he does. We're going to watch this back through in slow motion uh, if we could before we go over to the other video and gives ourselves a little different uh, scope of analysis. But the one thing that I will mention with Barry, and it, it, it really is just magnified because of all the things, all the nuances that allow Barry to do what he does in solving movement problems. There, there's a point that I want to make here is that when you, you know, there's this age old adage that we never step in the same river twice, right? For we're not the same and, and the river's not the same or, you know, so the, the, analogy holds true. But when I watch movement skill unfold for Barry Sanders in particular, but also other players, players that I've seen move time and time again, realize that you are an ever evolving creature and therefore your lens as a craftsman or craftswoman is probably changing as well. The great thing about Barry is there's so many highlights that I've seen so many times and watched at so many different speeds and maybe angles that each and every time I watch it, I notice something just a little bit different about Barry and who he is and, and what he's doing. And I would advise you, if you train athletes and, and you've worked with a certain athlete or maybe a certain group of athletes for a significant period of time, to go back and watch video or film of them from, say, four or five years ago, even if you're no longer working with that respective athlete, going back and watching how they solve movement problems, you're probably going to see something different from them each and every time, at least if you're looking at it um, at, a, at a certain dimensional level here, which is what I try to do with Barry. So now that I kind of got that out of the way, sort of for sorry for the meandering and the rambling there, let's go ahead and watch it back through at, at uh, half speed here, see if there's some things that we can highlight as we do. And I'm sure there will be. And like I said, then we will toggle back over to the other video. Even right now, there should be some things that you pick up. Okay. Yes, we cannot see what's unfolding in the immediate micro local problem in front of him, but we can already see some things in his movement behaviors that we might not see from a lot of other individuals. Uh, first and foremost, what we're always going to find from Barry is a skilled intentionality, an openness and a responsiveness to keep his options open as long as he can. So he's not just making the earliest or quickest decision. He's not trying to be the fastest decision maker. He's trying to keep his options open and select the most functional decision in most cases. And now that obviously could change based on context. If, if obviously he has somebody in his lap and has to make a fast, quick, um, reactive, more reactive um, action. However, what we typically find from him, like I said, is openness and responsiveness, a meta stability, an ability to go either direction, right or left, right, obviously, as he's about to hear, um, you know, we're, we're going to see him act in a way here, right? But we can already see what he's looking at to make that decision off of. So he's keeping his options open still to be able to bounce this outside if in, if he were need to, based on how this immediate opponent right here is behaving. Oops, I apologize for that. But again, we're seeing, you should hopefully be able to see that a nuance that is important and imperative to catch. But when he needs to, and as he needs to, he flexibly adjusts in commits to a certain movement action. Okay. Hopefully you guys are picking up on that and seeing why I'm speculating that in the way that I am still able to go left or right as long as possible until he's able to make that decision that is going to be most functional for this respective situation. Once he sees that um, this individual right here 
Um, let's see if I can get my spotlight out. Obviously, this individual right here is in a position which affords Barry the opportunity to move down the hashes here, or if he were to have to bounce it outside, say in this direction, obviously now he's already committed to going um, to his right, but he kept his option open to move and bounce to his left uh, for as long as he could. Um, I hate to belabor that point, but it's an important one that we're going to see as a trend and as a thread throughout. Now, once Barry gets to this point, you can see he's on a constant scan in search of information, always scanning. Look at, I mean, I, I know that you guys are going to think like last week, I'm making a lot out of this. I am, and I am for good reason. Okay. Remember we're going at 50% speed here, but look at the head, watch the head turn. Okay. Constant scan pivot points within his visual gaze, not anchoring anywhere, pivoting between locations and spots to pick shit in the world up. What is out there? What opportunities, what challenges, what threats are all out there? And he's on a constant search for them. Barry, probably more than any other individual athlete in this transcends American football. I believe that this statement would hold true. Barry is the best example of this tight integrated coupling between perceptions, cognitions, and actions. And because of that, you're going to see Barry, he's always perceiving to act and acting to perceive. It is tightly coupled. He's always acting in a way where he can gain more information with the world, getting more access to information in the world. And we see it here on this first touchdown play. Okay, let's watch it through one more time if we could. And then we'll, we'll also see it from the other angle. Another mention that I want to mention, or another mention that I want to make here rather, sorry, the cat got my tongue there for a moment, um, is this flexible adjustability of his actions. Okay, we saw it on the first play. Uh, if we get out of the lion's den there. We saw it on the first play with his really elongated lunge crossover out of that, okay? I apologize on the mouse here, but we see it right there again. Okay, watch. See if I can get us where we need to be. Okay. This a uh, constant adjustability of his action. He isn't chasing an optimal technical model, but what he is chasing is the most functional fit the most functional coordination and control of the motor system degrees of freedom at all times. And that's why we see him in this place or way where he has an abundance of strategies that certainly helps his dexterity. Remember degeneracy precedes dexterity abundance precedes adaptability. And we see it from Barry all the damn time. Okay. Yes, we might be able to look at Barry's movement mechanics if they were independent and isolated from the unfolding problem. And we might be able to point to certain biomechanical truths, certain attractor states that are what we would refer to as more optimal, right? But it's always about how it's flexibly adjusted to what's unfolding in the world, okay? And hopefully you got enamored by some of the things that we saw unfolding from Barry here. Again, watch it once more, and I could watch this over and over and over again. Again, it's about the adjustability, but look at this, guys and gals. Perceive to act, act to perceive. It's always this constant coupling, this constant intertwined nature, okay? Watch his head. Always on the search for information. And he is using that information pickup to regulate his actions. Okay. Some cool nuances there that obviously um, a bunch of different layers. We're going to see it from a little different angle and then we'll go over to the other video and then you'll get to hear John Mandon and Pat Summerall talk for a bit as well. Again, perceive to act, act to perceive, watch this. Okay. Yes, his eyes are behind a visor, but I think you guys can agree with me. We see the constant perceptual search for information. If skill is a search process, Barry Sanders is the key individual to use as that illustrative example. Head constantly searching. And it is obviously all around 
what is unfolding in the world. We can see his eyes right there behind his visor. Watch with me again, if you will, as we, and I belabor this, but it's, it's important to repeat. It's imperative to repeat because again, he is the best example of this that I believe that I've ever saw. And I don't think you'll, I don't, I don't think you'll disagree if you have watched enough um, of Barry Sanders move versus others in the world. Now here's that grainy video that I was talking about, but you can see from a sideline view. Now we're going to be able to gain greater understanding oriented around the context. Remember context feeds in the content, the context of the problem in the world, the content of the movement solution, which is coordinated, controlled, and organized to meet the needs of that context. And notice I did keep the volume on on this one uh, simply because it's been a minute since I think any of us have heard John Madden and Pat Summerall talk about what was unfolding because it's, it's been a while since they've been in the broadcast booth. But I, I think you're going to find that both of them are highlighting many of the things that we would highlight in a, maybe say an ecological dynamics approach or primarily that I would um, adopt or gravitate my lens oriented to uh, within this problem solver paradigm. So go ahead and listen to this um, if you would. It is a pretty good mixture after all. Um, and I just wanted to, you to hear that, not for nostalgia purposes, well, maybe for nostalgia purposes for some of you out there, certainly for me, um, but just to recognize that obviously these uh, nuances, these nuances of this movement problem solving process, again, perceptions, cognitions, and actions. Again, we can't separate any of them from one another. And that some of the brightest minds, John Madden certainly being one of them, for um, is goofy as he was in certain ways with his turducken and some of his other uh, Thanksgiving um, antics, as well as some of the ways that he um, kind of interacted with that, which what he was seeing. Uh, we don't often realize and recognize how far ahead he was of his time with the things that he was looking at. Now, of course, oftentimes many within American football are speaking too, uh, let's just call it ambiguously about moves on moves or ambiguously about vision. When people, when they, when we try to get them to narrow it down, often don't have the ability to do it. I believe that John Madden wasn't one of those individuals. He knew what he was looking at. And I think it was highlighted in some of the things that he says about Barry Sanders, how he's behaving on this respective play, perceive to act, act to perceive, constant scanning. It's the perceptions and the vision along with the movements and the actions. Okay. So that play one, uh, now kind of coming to completion here. Let me, if I can, uh, move back into our other video. Again, I apologize for the toggling, but I think you'll, you know, it'll be worthwhile as part of this illustrative case study. Actually, let me, um, yeah, let's, let's go through this at, at half speed now, 50% uh, speed again, because we did watch it all the way through before. Um, I will take us to sort of the key events, if you would, um, to where I believe that in these key events, we can really start to see the magical nature of Barry Sanders movement problem solving, as well as his information movement coupling. And what I mean by that is 
we see him on this constant problem solver mentality or within this constant problem solver mentality, right? Even in the open field, once he gets here, um, we have to think about his constant search. It's not just that search just isn't about the opponent's behavior, even though I say that and he's about to interact with this individual here, but uh, on that, on that stiff arm, but let me go back and let's see here again. You can tell this is completely unscripted. <laughs> um, let me get him past where now this is certainly impressive, right? He's got a defender dead to rights pulling him in. Um, Barry just continues to adapt. Most people think that Barry was nothing but a scat back, nothing but a guy who relied on elusiveness and agility. Now, certainly that was part of his style and the predominant portions of his style, but people forget that he still ran people over. He still used power strategies such as a stiff arm. He still used speed strategies. It wasn't just about the elusiveness he had tools in the toolbox of a number of different sorts. And as we see it right there, as he sort of gives this shiver, um, and then obviously into the, into the stiff arm. But right now is what I want you guys to see. And of course, as I say that, I get off of where I need to be. We can see him here looking from left to right again. Notice he's very purposeful with this attention where his attention is unfolding. He's very intentional about his perceptual search. Just like I harp on guys not moving for move's sake, he's not perceiving for perception's sake. He's perceiving deliberately. This is an intentional, attentional search. Hopefully that makes some sense, okay? He's not just searching for the opponent's behavior. Yes, the opponent's behavior matters. The opponent's behavior will afford certain behavior for him, but it's about the opponent's behavior and it's about the space. And it's about combining that. I am terrible on the mouse yet again here. Um, it's about combining those, that information space to allow him to regulate his movement. He's not just looking for one specifying information source. He's looking for information sources that could be specifying and he's differentiating between those. He's allowing that then to kind of guide his affordances that he perceives, selects and acts upon. And then when we get him here, okay, at this key event, I know it's hard to tell because of this perspective, we'll see it more on the sideline view that we'll get later on that grainy video. He's using this information, that information space to set up what he does as well as any other running back has, has really ever done. I know I talked about it last week with Jonathan Taylor, this simultaneous and then successive affordances and using those to guide one's action. Barry did it better than anybody else. Okay. Um, I will take that to the grave. He might have not consciously known that he was setting this up in this way, but he sees if I could get my mouse out here, not only does he see these two individuals, okay, if you can kind of see my spotlighted mouse, but look at where he's looking. He is looking to this guy, but he's also looking to his teammate over here in the space that might be afforded in this huge area that would exist right here, okay, behind the immediate opponent. And that part of it, guys and gals, is not something that I want you to miss. Okay. Again, as JJ Gibson said, perception for the skilled behavior gets wider, longer, and deeper. Okay. The skilled performer who is perceptually attuned and sensitive to what's unfolding and is using that information to guide their own respective actions. They're not just looking to the immediate. Yes. These two defenders in front of him, present tremendous threat and challenge to him, but he's staying so adaptable in this state and frame of mind of adaptability within adaptability that he's using that to set things up. And then of course we see the abundance. We see the abundance of the movement actions again, not necessarily technically perfect, but something that we would look at as being really functional. Okay. Let's not miss that. In fact, sometimes we see him 
become not only organizing a really authentic movement solution, but one that can sort of get us into harm's way to a certain degree. This amount of interpersonal distance that exists between this immediate defender and Barry is a very tight window and he has to flexibly adapt and adjust. And he's able to do that through the abundance in his movement strategies. And then we see, again, it isn't about the actions. It's about how those actions unfold in accordance to the unfolding problem, okay? And then again, it's always about perceiving to act and acting to perceive um, at all times. If we go over to our other video here to hopefully give us uh, some perspective there, I'm going to fast forward. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Let's see, I believe it's right about here. So that same play now from this, from this angle, let's go ahead and listen to John Madden and Pat Summerall again. Man, I, I should probably just shut up and let John Madden take over there and, and talk about that, which what is being perceived in the world. But you heard a few things that John Madden said, right? In particular, yeah, Pat Summerall said some things too, but some things that John Madden said, he perceives everything. He sees everything. He knows what everyone else is doing. And when Madden says he knows what everyone else is doing, it isn't some pattern recognition necessarily. It's an alive online movement control based on what he's perceiving and picking up in the world. He's that sensitively attuned and from my perspective to the unfolding behaviors and more so the unfolding problem, the space and time that is afforded to him and how he can act in accordance to it. Hence the reason why we see him have that hesitation, wait, set things up and coordinate it um, in accordance to it. Let me see if I can get uh, some 50% speed here just for this. And I apologize for the graininess. Obviously, this is the best that we can do from 1997. But look at this right now. I just want to uh, highlight a few things if I could. Uh, actually, let me. So again, we see what he's picking up. Okay. Right now, at this instant, where we have this visual, either there could be a visual anchoring here, but there could be a pivoting between picking up these two respective defenders and then having the opportunity to, to know and feel what's out here in this space for what may be afforded to him, whether it's here in this area or whether it's going to take place more so behind these two defenders. And we should obviously also recognize, as I did before, that he has a teammate here, which I don't think is going to be lost uh, on him either. And that's why we see this slight hesitation as that space gets closed down and he realizes I'm going to solve, I'm going to use this information from this problem, set up my solution. So the unfolding problem solution dynamics of this immediate local movement problem here can change how the problem and solution dynamics are going to unfold later on. And again, the graininess of that video, I apologize for that, but I think you guys can still pick up that, which what I'm putting down here. Uh, let's see, we're going to go ahead. And as John Madden said, if there was a better running back um, to have ever done it, he didn't see him. And I don't know if there ever has been one, uh, at least that would rival this, at least from a problem solver perspective and paradigm. I think we're seeing that abundance, we're seeing that adjustability, we're seeing that adaptability over and over and over again here from Barry and into the end zone for his second touchdown. Uh, bear with me here, guys and gals. We got one video left and hopefully you guys are seeing why I geek out about 
investigating Barry Sanders' movement skill at the depth and level that I do. And now when we go to this next video, uh, play number three, we're going to see that adaptability within adaptability yet again, even when things are going astray. Okay, right there, he starts to have this little slip. He has this little stumble where he dynamically has to regain his balance. Adaptability within adaptability when things are going astray, when there's chaos around him, still able to take in that information and organize an adjustable, adaptable movement solution to it. Um, at about the 15 yard line here, if I could just pause it, he comes across the 15. We can see him now. There will be times that even for the skilled performer who's accustomed to scanning, that they must visually fixate their gaze somewhere. They must anchor their gaze to take in information so they get the most accurate perception of that which what is unfolding. And usually that's when there's an immediate opponent that needs to be beat. We see it right there with that individual. I don't know what number he is, but let me see as Barry crosses the 15, or let's see as Barry crosses the 15. Right there's the dynamic balance that he must regain. Boom. Okay, he's already fixated on him. And he now uses that information about not only the interpersonal distance with this immediate opponent, but also I would speculate the postural and kinematic considerations of this immediate defender to determine, am I going left? Am I going right? Once I make that decision, even though that's all intertwined and interwoven, how will I go left and right? And what do I need to do in order to adjust my actions to fit this unfolding problem? And he just so happens to, as he often did, execute this extreme angle of this crossover cut as we see right here. Whew. Now, this is where action capabilities obviously matter, okay? Having the capability of performing this style, this extreme angle of crossover. Not everyone has this, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And look at as he throws this inside foot down underneath him, crosses over from left to right in this way. That is an extreme angle that most guys cannot get into, okay? But that type of um, abundance, that type of controllability, that type of action capability or effectivity in the ecological world allows him to obviously display or express some of this dexterity. Barry always had options. And again, we're back on that perceptual search, perceive to act, act to perceive. That head is always turning. Get into the open field, keep taking in the information, make sure that nothing is changing too dynamically and doesn't present more threats. And it doesn't get much better than those three plays, even though there's a bunch of other plays that we could probably utilize when we talk about Barry doing what he does. Okay. Obviously, um, we're going to see it here again from another angle. Obviously, it's a one of one, right? There's nobody else who can do these things, at least at this level, but it's about finding the authenticity. It's about also finding the things that we can absorb from his game that we would like to try and chase for the players that we work with. No one else will be Barry Sanders, nor should we chase anyone else necessarily being Barry Sanders. But what we can do is learn from him and from his dexterity. And again, this view isn't the greatest in order to pick that up. But again, we see. Um, the perceptual search, the constant search for information. And one more time, let's go ahead and uh, get to uh, Pat Summerall and John Madden to sort of take us away. Let's see if I can find it. Should be right here. And we'll go back to full speed. And let's hear what they have to say.
<laughs> and as they said, no one wants to be on Barry's commercials, right? No one wants to be on his poster. No one wants to be on his highlight. But the thing is, even the best of the best ended up there. Um, you know, more, more often than not, no one was really exempt. Anyone from Derek Brooks to John Lynch to Reggie White uh, to Joey Browner, it, it didn't really matter who it was in the level of defender that they were. Um, most everyone through that decade uh, got posterized at one time or another by number 20, specifically in 1997 when he was at his very, very best. Um, you know, just a, a few things here. Obviously, John Madden mentioned um, he wants to get defenders to stop their feet, but his feet never stop moving. Um, I only partially agree with that. I definitely agree with the first sentiment there that he does want to get players to stop their feet, but he isn't necessarily consciously thinking, I need to get this player to stop their feet. My feet will keep moving and then I will act. It's a constant intertwined nature here. That player and players in these situations with Barry often end up stopping their feet because they have fixed and frozen degrees of freedom across their human movement system, their perceptions, cognitions, and actions. Their system becomes frozen because Barry puts them frozen in their shoes, and that's how he makes players miss as often as he does. Barry's feet will stop. Okay. He will stop them. It's just that he already has such a, a tight coupling between his perceptions, decisions, and actions that he makes that it appears as though everyone else is stuck in the mud. Everyone else is stuck in cement and his feet are still moving. Okay. Um, the, at least that's my hypothesis on the matter. Oftentimes we do see him stop, control, sway, slice, move from one action to the next. And that is all, again, for the purpose of perceiving and making a more accurate decision based on the world. But there, again, much to John Madden's point, okay, um, if I can get my spotlight, look at this position that uh, this old cat is in, okay? Though this amount of interpersonal distance, I know we talk a lot about interpersonal distance here. That's pretty tight, okay? I can't NFL Next Generation staff this because obviously this is from 1997, but that's about a, what, yard and a half, maybe two yards at best at times, depending on exactly when we measure it. It's a pretty tight interpersonal distance. But Barry has so much abundance within his movement system that he still finds a solution to it, even if it's not um, maybe repeatable, or optimal in the sense that it's what he would love to use. He's just adapting. He, he just does, he's, as he has said, he's perfecting the art of making someone miss. He has this singular intentional objective to just make guys miss. And he made guys miss over and over and over and over again. Um, not only in these three plays that we saw today, but obviously across the course of his career um, in the 1997 season was maybe the best example uh, of that for him. So ladies and gentlemen, obviously uh, what we see from, from Barry Sanders, hopefully you guys get kind of get the drill here. There's a bunch of different layers to it. Okay, we see abundance, abundance leading to adaptability. We see this constant state of adaptability in this true problem solver paradigm where these movements um, are really being coordinated, controlled and organized at a multidimensional level between his perceptions, cognitions and actions. And they're as tightly coupled and as intertwined and interwoven as any example that we see across almost any other sport. So I know this video got a little long. I thought obviously we needed to do justice to, to who Barry is and what Barry's movement skill is really about. And that performance, not only in Thanksgiving in 1997, but also to use it to inform our analysis, to inform our understanding of how we view all movement behavior, not only within our sports here today, but across sports and across time. All obviously um, illustrative case studies for us to continue 
to purposely study and try to get greater understanding of. So for the movement play of the week for week 12, uh, 2021 season, I think we'll be on to the real uh, 2021 season now next week after taking the brief pause to dive in to Barry Sanders today. Thanks much guys and gals. I appreciate you. If you have thoughts, ideas, comments, feel free to fire them away on the comment section.